Hey, how's everybody doing? Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is this will be the last uh, video on the uh, Carnival Vista series, and uh, basically I'm just going to give my uh, thoughts on the uh, overall uh, experience. I'll break it down into different categories for you. Uh, so just to give a little backstory on on uh, the situation, uh, this was a last minute booking. Uh, I've actually uh, booked it about five days before sailing. It was a uh, casino offer, and uh, you know I I wanted to to, to get on this sailing uh, earlier, but it just wasn't available. Uh, and then you know all of a sudden I checked it and it was there. Uh, I got an interior room, uh, and like I said, it was a casino offer, so they threw in uh, five hundred dollars free play. They also threw in uh, $200 on board credit uh, and the drink package. So not just drinks in the casino, but you know, everywhere on the ship. So, you know, all in all with taxes, fees, uh, gratuities and everything, it was just a little over 400 bucks. So, you know, not too shabby considering, like I said, they're giving you $500 in free play and $200 on board credit, so you're almost making money by going on the cruise. Um, but, uh, so, having said all that, I guess I'll start with uh, embarkation. And uh, I got to the, you know, it, since, since it was a uh, late, last minute uh, booking, I ended up with, a, uh, with one of the later uh, uh, boarding times. So, you know, I got there, uh, by the time I got there, it was, you know, it was kind of busy, but the lines seemed to move pretty fast. Uh, you know, at the first station where they check your, uh, your, your vaccination card and all that stuff. Uh, I used the uh, Verify app. So really all I had to do was show them the uh, screenshot and the uh, government ID. So breeze through that. And then the next stop was the uh, security point where they x-ray your luggage and all that. Uh, that that went really fast. And then after that, of course, it was uh, guest services to actually check in. Uh, now, that there was a long line uh, for that, but it, like I say, it seemed to move fairly quickly. Uh, one interesting thing happened at guest services, and that was... Uh, you know, I handed the lady my uh, boarding pass and my passport card. You know, usually I, when I sail, I use the uh, passport card as my, you know, as my form of ID. And, uh, you know, they scan your boarding pass and then they scan your passport or your passport card. Well, she kept trying to scan it and wasn't taking it. And uh, she told me that uh, that was, that I was the first person that day that she had encountered that used the passport card. Well, you know, even though I use my passport card, I always bring the passport book with me as well. And uh, so I offered, hey, you know, uh, would it help if, you know, I give you my passport book? So she tried it, scanned it, and then boom, you know, right away I was checked in, everything was good to go. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, after that, once I got done with guest services, since it was such a late uh, boarding time, it was pretty much open boarding at that point. So you could just walk right on the ship. <clears throat> and um, and since I got on board, and it was by the time I got on board, it was almost three o'clock. Uh, the rooms were already open, so uh, I just went ahead, took my room, uh, luggage down to the room, dropped it off, went to the uh, the uh, muster station to knock that out and that you know that lasted just I mean it was it was real fast I mean he just showed us how to use the life jacket and uh, you know told us hey come up here if, if you know something goes wrong so you know I had that all knocked out uh, so the next uh, so all in all you know embarkation I, I'd say was a very positive uh, experience went really smooth not really any hook hiccups Next thing uh, I'll talk about is uh, meals. You know, uh, that's, you know, everybody, you know, when you go on a cruise, everybody always looks forward to the food. 
uh, I would say I was now I was on the Vista back in April, and uh, I have to say that the, I was really disappointed in the main dining room. It seemed like uh, the portions were really tiny. The selection wasn't that great. Uh, I can remember ordering a uh, shrimp cocktail uh, for an appetizer, and uh, they they literally brought like two tiny shrimp. Uh, and, and, you know, yeah, I, I, I get, you know, I understand, you know, you can order as many as you want and a lot of people will say that, but, you know, I think starting you out with just two shrimp, I mean, that's a little bit, uh, a little bit ridiculous in my opinion, but, but this time around it was much better. Uh, the selection seemed better. The portions were better. The food, you know, the, the flavors were better. So I have to say it was a big improvement. I um, also ate at the uh, Lido Marketplace uh, a couple times you know, for breakfast, and I wasn't too impressed with that. Uh, you know, the breakfast selections weren't that great. There was no bacon. Uh, the eggs were, you know, it seemed they seemed more like powdered eggs than, than regular eggs. Uh, the, uh, you know, the potatoes were okay, but they were just, you know, just real bland. I don't know. It wasn't what I would what I was hoping for uh, so I ended up you know eating breakfast in the main dining room after that and I and and once again you know the, the main dining room experience was a lot better so uh, so yeah I, I don't know the, I've never really had too many good experiences uh, with uh, the Lido marketplace uh, okay and then so the next thing uh, I did try the uh, Guy's Pig and Anchor, and, uh, you know, I've, I've been kind of disappointed with the Guy's Pig and Anchor the last couple of times. You know, the first time, the very first time I had it, it was really good, uh, and so subsequently, you know, I kind of look forward to getting that first meal at Guy's Pig and Anchor. Well, you know, uh, I tried it again this time, and... I'm not sure what it is. It seems like they're using some spices, uh, a combination of spices. I don't know if they're trying to do like a dry rub thing and, and they're just using a, a bad combination of, of spices that, that you wouldn't normally encounter. But I mean, this time around I had the chicken, the, uh, the beef and the pulled pork and you know, uh, the chicken was just, I don't know. It just didn't have a good flavor at all, in my opinion. The beef was okay. The pulled pork out of the three was the, was probably the best. And the sides, I had uh, the potato salad and some and the collard greens. The greens were good. The potato salad was once again it was just just wasn't good. So I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to start changing up my my routine for the first meal on board. So. But that's that. Uh, the steakhouse, Fahrenheit 555, uh, was really good. Uh, you know, no complaints there. I mean, I, I've never had a bad experience uh, at the steakhouse. Um, uh, the uh, Also, the Mongolian Walk. You know, if you go up to Gigi's, uh, you know, during lunch on a sea day, or even, I think even in port, they, they, they had it. But, uh, you know, they give you a little, uh, little piece of paper and with some choices on there for proteins and vegetables and, and all that. And they have different sauces. You just fill it out, hand it to them, and then they'll prepare it for you. And uh, I don't know, I really, uh, that, that's been a pleasant surprise. You know, the last uh, uh, two or three times I've tried it, you know, it's, it's kind of something that I'm kind of looking forward to now. And uh, so that's pretty much it for the meals. Uh, I mean, I did, you know, I did uh, go up to the pizza uh, place back aft, uh, and it was, it was pretty good. You know, nothing to write home about, but, you know, when it's, when it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you've had a few to drink, uh, you know, it's not bad to grab some, uh, some uh, pizza, to, you know, before you, before you head off to, to, to bed. Uh, so then the next, uh, thing I'll talk about is the capacity you know a lot all, these days everybody's concerned with capacity uh, I'd say this this time around uh, I think I heard we had 4600 on board is what one of the crew members told me so I mean that's got to be 
that's got to be capacity. Uh, it, it felt like it. You know, the Lido deck was, you know, you were hard-pressed to, to, to get a chair out there uh, or even be able to dip a toe in the pool or anything. So, but, I mean, that's to be ex expected. It was a summer cruise. Kids are out of school. Uh, cruising is pretty much back to normal. And, you know, so I kind of expected that it was going to be crowded. It wasn't, that wasn't a, a big shock to me. Um, you know, if you know, it go, if you know that going in and you can plan accordingly, but, uh, that's, that's pretty much my, I, I wouldn't say it was, I wouldn't say it was a, a negative experience. It's just, you know, it was just something to note, you know, that, uh, I think we're, uh, if you go this summer compared to the previous summer, definitely things are a lot more closer to, to, to back to normal uh, than I've seen it. Um. So the next uh, topic, our next category would be ports. For this cruise, we stopped in uh, Montego Bay, Grand Cayman, and Cozumel. And um, I did not get off the ship in Montego Bay. I decided, you know, uh, due, to the, due to the high capacity, I decided to uh, take advantage of, uh, you know, everybody being off the ship to enjoy the pools, hot tubs, that kind of thing. So can't really give a good, uh, you know, account for what happened there. I do know that it did rain that day pretty heavily. Uh, so I guess, you know, for the folks that were out there, that's something they, you know, but, you know, if you're doing a cruise uh, in the Caribbean area, I mean, you should always expect a, a, a late afternoon least. shower. So uh, the next port was Grand Cayman and, not, you know, nothing really out of the ordinary to report there other than uh, the area where they want you to, to report to for an excursion that it was just totally, I mean, it, it was just nothing but chaos. That's, that's the only way I can, I can describe it. I mean, they, they had like four tents set up and you had all these excursions and you had our ship and then you also have the Celebrity Equinox in port. So you had two cruise ships worth of passengers trying to squeeze into these four tents. And, I mean, lines were mixing. You, you didn't know what line you were in. People didn't know. I mean, there was a lot of pushing. I mean, I got, you know, stepped on a few times, uh, pushed. I mean, it's just, I felt like I was in a mosh pit uh, at some point. And what was interesting there's all these signs talking about social distancing in the port area. And it's like, well, I mean, there's obviously, they're not, we're not adhering to that here. Uh, so I don't know, maybe next time I'll wear some, uh, steel toe boots or something, but, uh, that's just something to be aware of. You know, if you're going to do an excursion in uh, Grand Cayman, just, uh, just know that you're probably, uh, you're going to, you might have to do some combat. I, I don't know. That's about the best thing I can tell you. Uh, the next port was Cozumel. Uh, you know, it's, you know, if you've done any kind of cruising, you know, Carnival or Royal Caribbean or any of these companies, uh, you're always going to hit Cozumel pretty much. It's a guaranteed thing almost these days. Uh, you know, this trip around, you know, we got in a little bit earlier. They got us off the ship, uh, in a, in a pretty good amount of time. They're, you know, the lines went really fast. Uh, the port itself, you know, and, you, know, you get off that long pier. You know, once you get through the little duty-free shop, you know, on your way uh, to the other shops, I mean, it's pretty much pretty much wide open. Uh, but once again, they had the areas. Uh, I was doing a, an excursion in Cozumel, the uh, catamaran, VIP catamaran snorkeling, a uh, small group. And... Uh, Really good excursion. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's one hundred twenty dollars, and for that you get your. They provide all the equipment for the snorkeling. They take you to two different locations where you can snorkel. Uh, you know, you get you get a meal. Uh, they t it's an open bar, so you know all the drinks that you can handle pretty much. Uh, and I don't know. To me, I felt like it was uh, it was it was worth it. You know. I think the kids' price, I want to say, was $80 for that. But, uh, you know, the crew on board there, I mean, they were, you know, very, very helpful. I mean, they, 
they made sure they were constantly asking you, you know, hey, you need another drink, you need this, you need that. So and that's something that I really appreciated. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the ports. That's about all I can really report on that. Uh, talked about the excursion. Uh, you know, uh, the uh, next, I guess the final thing that I uh, would talk about is the disembarkation process or the debarkation process. You know, that's that's always the worst part of the cruise is uh, debarkation. I mean, I never I never look forward to it. It just seems like no matter how they try to organize it, it always devolves into just absolute mayhem. Uh, and this was no different. I mean, I got up early that 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 last morning going into port. Uh, I went to the main dining room, I had breakfast, and I mean, I think I got up there for breakfast about six thirty. And it was good, you know, uh, no problems there. I uh, went back to the stateroom, grabbed my luggage, and then I went up to the uh, Ocean Plaza area on Deck 5, which is uh, just, just forward of the, uh, the Havana area. And so I found me a nice little table, decided to get comfortable, you know, wait for my, my, my muster station to get called. And so, you know, that's, that's how, I, how it went. And, you know, once, once they called my muster station, I grabbed my bag, started heading down. And once you got in the vicinity of the elevator and the stairs going down to deck three, and it, it was just, like I said, it was just absolute mayhem. I mean, because I think part of the problem is you get people that want to get ahead of the process and they camp out uh in that area even though they're not supposed they're they're you know they make the announcements many many times but people still you know they don't care and unfortunately they there's just not enough crew to maintain all that and i mean you're already dealing with uh a crew shortage and so now you've got to handle four thousand plus people trying to get off the ship it's it's an impossible task you know it's and so that's pretty much how it went. Uh, it was pushing and shoving. You know, I, I ended up going, not taking the elevators, but going down the, uh, the stairs. And, you know, you just, you know, the best, the best strategy was just to put your head down and just keep moving forward. You know, don't make eye contact with anybody. Uh, you know, and I hate to say it like that, but, uh, you know, fortunately people just, they won't, they'll take advantage of you if you try to be nice, if you try to do the, you know, be courteous, then next thing you know, everybody's going to cut right in front of you. I mean, that's just, that's, that is what it is. But, uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is on fixing that. Uh, I've tried to think of different ways to do it, but I mean, what can you really do? You know, it's uh, some. Somebody smarter than me is gonna have to figure that one out. But yeah, the disembarkation process was terrible, as as it pretty much always is. Uh, once I got off the ship, actually into the terminal, it went really fast. You know, the they have the uh, facial recognition software now, so you don't have to show your passport or nothing. They'll just have you stand in front of the camera as long as, as long as your face matches what's what they've got in the system you're good to go uh they did have the lady that i mean this was in galveston so you always have the the the, the personnel that that are hang, standing out you know right before you leave the terminal asking if you you're bringing in any alcohol or tobacco or anything so they can collect their taxes uh but i didn't have that so you just say no and went on outside uh went luckily the timing was perfect. As soon as I got outside, the uh, shuttle back to the parking area was was right there. So I caught a break on that. But uh, so that's pretty much the the highlights of it all. Uh, if if I didn't cover something, if you got questions about it, feel free to leave a question in the comments, and I'll get back to you on it. Uh, all in all, it was a great cruise. I had a lot of fun. Uh, although I think. I think moving forward, I'm probably going to do less uh, summer cruises just because, you know, 
it's 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 just chaotic with the amount of people and the kids and 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 I'm not and I'm not uh, you know not to look you know cast shade or anything on families or, or anything like that but you know it's just it's just I, I guess you know I'm looking for like a more peaceful peaceful experience myself I've got nothing against you know I have a daughter of my own so I know how it is to to raise kids. And, uh, but that's just, uh, I guess that's just where I'm looking at it from, from now. I, you know, I may try to, instead of doing cruises during the summer, I may plan like some, some land trips, you know, like, you know, fly to these countries and spend three or four days, do, you know, do something like that. But, uh, so that's it. That's, uh, that'll close out this series on the Vista. Uh, my next cruise is coming up in September, which is next month. I'm uh, going on the Ovation of the Seas, uh, Royal Caribbean, uh, leaving out of Seattle, going to Alaska, seven-day cruise, uh, ended up in Vancouver. It's my first Alaska cruise, so I'm looking forward to that, and uh, hopefully I can get some good footage and, uh, you know, share that with all of you guys. Uh, but that's all I got. That's the end of this, uh, this video. I uh, hope everyone has a great weekend. And uh, we'll, we'll see you around. Take care.